Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Today I want to teach you how to do a simple sky replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve in the Fusion tab. Replacing the sky to make it a little more interesting is one of those basic compositing things that's relatively easy to do and increases the awesomeness of your shots. So what we're going to do is take this shot right here, lady running, and put in a sky that's a little more interesting, this sky. So the first thing I'm going to do is just drag this sky into my edit tab so that I have my sky on top of my original footage. It doesn't really matter if it's on top or bottom because we're going to deal with that later, but I'm going to select both of these, right click and say new fusion clip. Now I can switch over to fusion and you'll see I have two media in nodes. The first one is my footage. The second one is this sky and the sky is actually hooked to the foreground, which we can do it that way, but I'm just going to break those connections and put the sky in the background and the original footage in the foreground. So here in our merge node, we see just our original footage with no sky. So how do we replace this sky? For whatever shot you have, you pretty much need to take this sky out and put a new sky behind it. If you have a really blue sky, you can probably do that by just keying out the blue. But this sky is a little bit more gray, we have some kind of detail in the trees back here. And I'm thinking we're gonna get a better result if we do a luma key. Now, a luma key pretty much is like a color key, but it just uses the luminous channel. So what I'm gonna do in my original footage is I'm gonna go up to tools and go to mat. And under luma keyer, I'll drag this down to my nodes and drop it right on that line. And now all kinds of crazy things happen. Really what we're trying to do is cut out the brightest parts of our shot. So this sky. And how this luma keyer works, you select the brightness here of what you would like to cut out. And you'll notice that no matter what we do, it acts really weird. That's because we need to invert this because what it's trying to do is keep the sky and get rid of everything else. And we want it to do, we want it to keep everything else and get rid of the sky. So I'll hit invert. And I'm just going to drag my low threshold up a little bit until that sky, until it looks like this sky is behind the trees. You want to play around with that until it looks realistic. But now I have one problem. My sky is not big enough for my frame. So what I'm going to have to do is scale my sky up. So this media in node right here, this is my sky. I'm just going to rename this sky and I'm going to rename this. I'm just hitting F2 to rename original footage. So now I'm going to take my sky and I want to zoom it up. So I'm going to go up to my effects library under transform. I'm going to grab a transform node and again, drop it on that line in between the sky and the merge. And with my transform node selected, I can just scale this up. And this node also lets me move the sky around a little bit. So let's try something like that and let's play through it and see if it works. Okay, looks like the composite's pretty good. The only problem is this footage is moving around and our sky isn't. So what we're gonna have to do is track the movement of our footage and apply it to the sky. So what I'm gonna do is just grab this original footage and go to my tracking effects and select planar tracker and just drop this in between the keyer and the original footage. And now this opens up my tracking controls here in the viewer as well as the inspector. And I'm gonna to go to the first part of my image, very first frame and under tracker here, I'm gonna select hybrid point slash area. And then I'll go up to my pen tool and select a shape, just selecting these tree tops. And I'm not selecting the bottom because this girl is running through here and I don't want her to mess up the track. I'm also going to make sure that motion type is set just to translation, rotation, and scale because we don't need to track the perspective or anything. Then I'll hit this little button, which is track everything after the playhead and let it track. And now that's going to track the movement of the trees and the shot. And now this should be pretty much stuck to my trees. So, how do we apply this motion from this shape to our background layer, the sky? All we have to do is with the planar tracker selected and our track finished, hit this button that says create planar transform. I'll click that. And this makes a node out in the middle of nowhere, which we can connect to our sky node. So I'm gonna move my sky node over here, my transform node here, and I'm gonna drop this in between the transform and the merge node. And I'm just gonna hold down shift and drop that in that line right there. So what this is doing is loading in the sky, zooming it up, and then matching the motion from our track and then merging it under our original footage. So let's see how it looks. All right, the motion looks pretty good. Only problem, this edge 
And the cool thing is I can just grab my transform node and move this over a little bit. And that should fix the problem. So there you go, that's our composited shot. Nice new sky. Once I'm done with my composite, I can switch over to color and see how it looks graded. If I think this sky is a little bit too bright with the grade, I can go back to fusion. And with my last node before my merge selected, I can just hit, I can hit color corrector and I can compensate for my grade, make that nice. One thing to note, because this is a Luma key, I think parts of her shirt, you can technically see the clouds behind them, which if we wanted to control that, we could mask it off, but I don't know, it doesn't bother me. It's pretty hard to notice, so wouldn't worry about it. So there you go, that's our finished composite. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more Fusion and Resolve tutorials, make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Also, make sure that you have your notifications turned on. That's that little bell right next to the subscribe button because we're gonna be releasing some things that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Things that are time sensitive, okay? Anyway, my name again is Casey Ferris. Thanks for watching.